So last night I saw the movie Emily the Criminal, and this movie was so shockingly good. I was expecting like an average crime thriller, but this movie turned out to be super exciting. And it offers a lot of social commentary with fascinating themes and symbolic moments throughout the entire film. So to break this movie down, we're gonna use two themes. One, Emily's imprisonment, where we'll discuss Emily's history, the unethical employers, the systemic oppression in the film, and Emily's misery. And two, descent into freedom, where we'll discuss Emily's relationship with Yusuf, Emily's addiction to crime, Emily's newfound purpose, and the ending where Emily abandons Yusuf, and Emily's new life in a new country, and much more. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you wanna see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, Emily's imprisonment. The film starts off with our main character, Emily, at a job interview. Everything seems to be fine until she is asked about her criminal record. And from this, we learn that Emily's record includes a DUI. And because of this mistake she's made, it becomes incredibly difficult for her to now find a new job. Emily has tens of thousands of dollars in student debt to pay off for an arts degree that she hasn't even completed. And throughout the film, we see many different companies take advantage of Emily's desperation, like they do with many other underprivileged members of society. The interviewer and the opening scene feels like he has the right to lie to Emily, claiming he doesn't have her records on file, and was unaware of the DUI, and soon we find out that he actually does have all her records on file. Emily's manager at the catering company hires his staff as independent contractors to minimize the compensation that they are legally owed, and to reduce the rights that they have as workers. Employers like this know that they're members of society like Emily who are desperate enough to enter into an agreement into such an unfair contract. And those are the people that they will continue to hire. It's vicious. And Emily's interview with Liz's company demonstrates how difficult it is for underprivileged people to have a chance at working in a more reputable employer. The company's entry-level positions are mainly only unpaid internships. And while it's a great way to earn experience in a high potential field of work, the hours are full-time. So it's almost impossible for someone to accept the position unless they have a sizable financial cushion to fall back on. So the only people that are truly eligible for these full-time unpaid internships are privileged people who already have money. And the whole unethical capitalist aspect of this film showcases that those who are underprivileged are often kept down, and those who are privileged are helpfully guided up. We see Emily drive past the nightlife on her way to work, knowing it's a part of life she greatly misses out on and struggles to afford. She has to pretend to express certain emotions with her friend Liz that she really can't relate to. She has to celebrate and complain with Liz about things she can only dream of celebrating and even dream of complaining about. Emily is a fierce and strong character and she refuses to be walked all over. And that attitude backfires in the non-criminal world as we see her at job interviews. However, this hidden rage and fierceness is unleashed in the criminal world and seems to reward her tremendously. And what's the cost of crime if Emily is already incredibly lonely, detached, and neglected? If she already feels imprisoned, how much worse could prison be? And for so many underprivileged communities and groups, that can be the mentality. And there only seems to be one way out. Which brings me to theme number two, descent into freedom. When Emily is introduced to a world of crime and gradually becomes better and better at navigating it, she recognizes the potential that crime can offer her, as opposed to the numerous barriers she encounters in the regular world. For Emily, crime feels like the only pathway to freedom, and when the quality of life is so poor already, you have nothing to lose, so why not get your hands dirty? The risk of pain, death, or imprisonment doesn't seem as scary anymore, and the further you dive into the world of crime, the less realistic it is to clean your life up. So that's just more motivation to take things even further. Emily notices this philosophy in Yusuf and deeply admires him for it. He's a symbol of what she can become with his expensive new home and ability to travel. He's also the one person who has extended a helping hand that actually works during Emily's state of utter loneliness. Both characters are empathetic and kind people. They just feel like this lifestyle is the only way the cruel world allows them to live. And all of this together is why I think they both fall for each other. The one thing I found really fascinating about this film was when Emily seemed to really enjoy the fruits of her labor as a criminal, and even enjoy the process of crime itself. And I recently learned that in the world, there's actually a real common issue of criminals being addicted 
to crime, the same way they would be to an addictive drug. In an article in Psychology Today titled Addicted to Crime, it's mentioned that American psychologist Dr. John C. Brady concludes that an addiction to stealing is a behavioral-based addiction and that it is functionally equivalent to substance-based addictions for two main reasons. Theft addicts, one, generally derive the same uplifting, euphoric, and subjective sensations similar to substance abusers, and two, are almost blindly driven toward their goal and they cannot stop their self-defeating behaviors. And this ties in so tightly with Emily's character. It explains why Emily is so proficient in this steal and sell business, and why she begins breaking the rules of her criminal employer, robbing the same store more than once. And not only is Emily addicted, but Emily finds purpose in crime, something that she can excel at and improve upon and build upon financially, something she felt the non-criminal world would never allow her to do. This is now who she is as a person, her purpose and ability to succeed exceeds her love for Yusuf, which is why she abandons him in the vehicle. And this is why, in the end, when she escapes from the police and enters a new country and has a chance at freedom without crime, she still decides to rebuild the exact same life once again. Why not embrace the only thing the world is letting you be? Alright, that's my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me recommendations. And please let me know your thoughts around Emily the Criminal because I love this movie. I would love to discuss. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.